This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. The Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast from Belleville, Ontario, the beautiful Quinney area. I'm Charity Brown. Mark Fillman remains on holidays. For this Thursday, July 28th, just a few more days left of the month. For many, this weekend signifies the halfway point of summer. I know for students, it's kind of, yep, we've got one month in, one month down. It can be a little depressing. I'm not going to lie. Over the last week, I have seen back to school commercials. I have seen decorations for Halloween. And yesterday, I saw Christmas ornaments. So let's slow up here. Let's let's back the train up a little bit. And that was the purpose with our throwback Thursday today. Just a reminder, you know what? Yes, we may be halfway through summer, but there's still a lot more to enjoy. And we'll touch on actually an event coming up in the next couple of weeks. A great example, uh, Brandy Hodge from the United Way, Hastings Prince Edward. Uh, she joined us earlier this morning, the executive director, to talk about that. So we're going to talk about that in the, in the podcast in just a few moments. Wanted to kind of recap yesterday as well. Um, a couple of a couple of big things happened yesterday. Uh, one being the tickets for the Ottawa Senators Toronto Maple Leafs game. Uh, being hosted by the CAA Arena coming up September 30th. This is a preseason game. There's been a lot of uh, hype over it. Former or uh, past owner of the Ottawa Senators, Eugene Melnick, who passed away this spring, had kind of set the ball uh, set the ball in motion here, the ball rolling to to do this, to bring a preseason NHL game to Belleville as a thank you to uh, organizers and fans and the city um, during the pandemic, uh, the city of Belleville itself had um, lifted some of the fees and the costs from the organization, from the Belleville Senators organization during the pandemic to kind of help them out. So as a thank you, Eugene Melnick had wanted to bring this game to Belleville. So as I said, a lot of excitement over it. Tickets were to go on sale today, yesterday and today. They were to be sold to the general public. Um, season ticket holders had first dibs, of course. And then the rest were going to be uh, put out there for everybody to, to to buy. And they did not last long. Needless to say, tickets are not on sale today. Um, I, I heard several different things yesterday of lineups at the box office, people trying to get tickets online. Um, it was sold out within minutes. And when I say minutes, I want to say well within five minutes, tickets were gone. Um, which... It, it, I see both sides. I do. I really do. It's unfortunate because more people from the general public, I believe, should have had the opportunity to purchase tickets. Um, And it's unfortunate now, too, because I've also heard that they're showing up on uh, resale sites. Now, the Belleville Senators have come out and a statement was released. They have started a waiting list. So if they do and an investigation, the investigation being that if they do find tickets on uh, reselling sites, if, if there's scalpers out there with these tickets, or, and heaven forbid, if someone had bought a ticket um, through them and now are reselling them, they're going to they're, they're gonna do their best to revoke that ticket. And if that's the case, then they will become available and they can sell them. So they've started a waiting list if that should happen, and they're doing everything possible to avoid people being gouged if tickets show up on other sites. So we'll see how it plays out. This is an, ex- bottom line, this is an exciting event and it was meant to be a thank you. It's just unfortunate because now that it does seem to be tarnished um, and you can question and you can be angry and you can second guess how it was handled all you want, but this is how it's played out. So now how do we move forward, I guess, is the question. So it will be interesting to see. The game isn't until September, so we'll see what happens between now and then. On a happier note, (laughs) yesterday, it was a big day with McDonald's and Belleville General Hospital. If you listened to the podcast yesterday, then you heard from Jennifer McTavish, uh, a Belleville General Hospital Foundation member um, who told us all about the Dollar Saves a Life campaign, which was going on through Doyle's Foods owned McDonald's. So they have four locations. So there was one at the Bayview Mall. There's one on North Front. There's one at the Walmart here in Belleville. And then the McDonald's location in Madoc. All four of those locations were donating a dollar from every Big Mac purchase 
to the Belleville General Hospital Foundation to help the or help support the cardiology department. Um, and then at each location, there were other little fundraiser, fundraisers and ways to donate as well. I went out to the Bayview Mall and had a great time. <laughs> I really did. It was a lot of fun. I was paired up with former um, MPP and uh, Mayor of Belleville, Neil Ellis. And then the fire brigade, brigade showed up. Uh, members of the Belleville Fire Department pulled in, uh, which was quite interesting. And as they pointed out, it's not always... It's not always a positive when people see the fire department pull up because they did bring the truck because there's always that question of, oh, no, what's going on? But then once everything settles and they see they see the firemen and women out there laughing and taking part, then, of course, it's OK. And it, a great group of guys there yesterday, including Kevin Fisher, uh, Kyle Christopher was there, Steve Parks, Brock Reynolds and Captain Mike Bustos. Um, great guys and really nice chatting with them and having some fun in the drive through yesterday. So I did talk with Jennifer McTavish when I was there and I was hoping to talk to her again this morning. I had asked her, can we, you know, go over numbers and maybe get a recap of the day? And thankfully, she was she was great to do that. I did not know I would be interrupting her during her morning walk when I called her this morning. No. In fact, I'm on Dundas here walking. How are you today, Charity? Uh, well, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing just fine. I went to bed last night at 8 o'clock. <laughs> oh, my God. I was so tired. I can believe it. What a fun day yesterday. I'm not surprised you went to bed so early because I have to admit, I had such a fun time yesterday, and I was only there for a short period of time um, considering it, when you look at the entire day. So how did yesterday go? It was tremendous. I, um, I had lots of reports from my executive director, Steve Cook, to say that the North Front Street location was very, very busy, long drive through lineups, lots of people coming through, lots of people saying they were getting Big Macs. Uh, and same with uh, the Baby Mall restaurant for McDonald's. We had lots of uh, enthusiastic responses with <laughs> folks at the at the drive through it was a great day. The volunteers were tremendous coming out and supporting us and asking uh, the customers at McDonald's to support BGHF with great enthusiasm. It was fun. <laughs> Lots of fun. Well, yeah. and I, I think a lot of credit has to, has to be given to uh, those going through the drive through as well, because I'm sure it was a little questionable at times. <laughs> <laughs> with all the volunteers standing out there. But everybody was yes. so generous. Again, it, it really brought home how generous this community is. Yeah, we are fortunate to live where we live. I, I said that more than once during uh, my day with the various folks I had the great opportunity to chat with. And, um, you know, even the, the folks coming through, the, the customers for McDonald's, they're um, telling us their personal stories about... Um, family members that have had treatment, that have uh, gone on to become well again, and um, or people that they had lost, moms and dads that they wanted to remember, that kind of thing. So touching, lots of nice stories and great support, great support. Now, the money raised yesterday going to the car- cardiology department. And the poster child for this year was the echocardiogram. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a significant piece of equipment, very uh, vital to the cardiology team to uh, detect and determine what might be ailing someone, um, but not not a cheap piece of equipment. It's it's pretty pricey, and the uh, wish list from QHC for the Belleville General Hospital site uh, is for two of those. So that was the machine that we were targeting and that we were trying to get closer to purchasing, um, and with the support of our community and partners like Bob Doyle uh, at Doyle Food Services, definitely. Um, definitely got closer yesterday. Absolutely. And so for those who maybe weren't able to make it out yesterday, Jennifer, how can they support Belleville General Hospital Foundation and, and purchasing these machines? You can telephone us uh, through the, the hospital number, uh, the 969-7400. And if uh, they want to try for extension 2061, uh, that's Jan. And she would be really grateful for any donations that they wanted to phone in. They can come and visit us. Uh, we we welcome drop-in visitors uh, which, uh, of any kind, but certainly <laughs> those bearing checks are, are welcome. Um, and then we also have, you can go to our website and uh, you can donate directly online. Looking forward to hearing the, the final tally. When do you think that will I, be in? 
uh, we might have some news later today. It's uh, it, There's a lot of coin to count, Absolutely. and that think later today, but certainly by tomorrow. Wonderf- it, it was a great day financially, but also just in terms of the spirit of the day. Absolutely, and great to be a part of it. Thanks so much again, Jennifer. Well, thank you, Charity. So we look forward to hearing the final numbers, as Jennifer said, which, fingers crossed, will come out later today. Again, it was a great time and all for a great cause helping out the Belleville General Hospital Foundation. Another great organization here locally, of course, that helps out so many people is the United Way. And we were joined by Executive Director Brandy Hodge this morning to talk about the amazing Realtors race, which is scheduled for August 11th. Now, as I said to Brandy, in my head, I love the amazing race. So I had pictured um, teams running around the area, finding clues, um, doing different challenges, moving on, not just on the cars, but maybe biking, walking, running. So I asked her, is, is, am I close? Is this what this day is going to be? You're really close. Yeah, okay. You're really close. It's a full day. It's got lots of kind of mental and physical challenges. It goes from Quinney West uh, through Belleville. So there is quite a range across the Quinney region that folks will visit. Uh, and some of the, the um, challenges that they've got arranged uh, is just really remarkable. So last year was an incredible day. We were able to tailor it to COVID restrictions. Oh, good. Um, and we stuck with that this year because when we started planning, we just weren't really sure, you know, what that would look like. So teams of two people will, uh, will travel all across the region and, and have a ton of fun. Will they have any special markings? Will we be able to identify them if we see them out? Yeah, you probably will be able to identify their cars, but at the challenges, you'll definitely see uh, some markings markings for sure. Um, the day is a really great collaboration between the Quinney District Association of Realtors, uh, United Way, and it's presented by Rael Homes. So it's a really neat day. So yeah, there's some really um, standout signs that are all over the Quinney community. So if you see them, they'll be fun to watch. Now, what are some of the challenges that these folks well, are going to be? I can't tell you that. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, no, you can't have, but some of the ones from <laughs> last year were um, we visited the Buffalo Farm out in Sterling. Oh, wow. And you would have to go through the whole Buffalo Farm <laughs> and find the United Way tag that is in the ear of the Buffalo. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and find the numbers of the Buffalo. So <gasps> it was really, I'd never been to the Buffalo <laughs> Farm, but it was remarkable. So it was a ton of fun. But there's all kinds of incredibly um creative challenges that are that are set up for for folks who are participating is there any opportunity for people um to watch or cheer them on throughout the day oh for sure um registration is open to folks if, the, if anybody else wants to participate they can certainly give us okay. a okay i think we have room for maybe two more teams we're getting really close to being full um which is great that's a fantastic uh that's a fantastic thing to have but um yeah anybody can participate so but if people want to watch um we do kick off at riverside park um on the 11th of august and uh and that a registration's at 8 and then kickoff will be at 9. So there's usually a really fun activity to, to start the race. If they're not participating, is there still an opportunity for them to help you out as well? Always. Okay. <laughs> Always. You know, we're going to kick off our campaign season in September. Um, you know, we're really close to our goal for sponsorship for this event. So um, we're, we're not quite there yet. So if anybody uh, is interested in sponsoring the event, it's a really great opportunity to have uh, the business name out in front of realtors and, you know, all of the different dynamics that happen within a, a real estate transaction. So folks are welcome to give us a call and, and sponsor that day. Um, but then, of course, just visiting our website to contribute to the annual campaign uh, is always appreciated and you know we're we're entering a campaign season of another you know pretty yeah. precarious year where there's going to be a lot of folks who are going to need some help this event is going to you know put us that much closer to our goal um, but yeah we need everybody in the community to to uh, to think about how they can help others absolutely now when when you were putting this together brandy do you go through it yourself just to test it out well, the people who are creative on our team do. That's not me. <laughs> but, uh, yes, they do. They, we have a run-through day uh, next week. So um, a lot of the challenges will they'll, you know, kind of go through all of the clues because there's some incredible clues that are given and, um, and then the actual challenge itself. So, yeah, we do test run it and make sure that everything is working as it should. And, yeah, it's a fun day. Now, you mentioned uh, hitting Sterling, the Buffalo Farm in Sterling last year. How wide an area does it actually um, encompass? How, how far do they actually travel? So typically, this year, it will be Belleville and Quinney West. 
Okay. Um, and last year we did do uh, Belleville, Quinney West, and Sterling. So it just depends on where we can find some really neat challenges. So this, this event will have some legs and it will last uh, a number of years. So if anybody out there who is listening thinks, oh, I have a really great location for an event, give us a call uh, because we're kind of planning years in advance. The Quinney District Association of Realtors and the United Way's Amazing Realtors Race coming up August 11th. Again, where can people register, Brandy? They can call our office at 613-962-9531 or just go to our website, unitedwayhpe.ca slash amazing race. Thanks so much, Brandy. Thanks, Charity. Yes, thank you to Brandy again this morning for joining us. The uh, Realtors, the Amazing Realtors Race, August 11th in support of the United Way. Again, another fun day and another great way to uh, to support the community. And a reminder, the summer is not over yet. Going back to the beginning, we may be hitting that midway point. But that is just one of many events still to come this summer. So let's get out and enjoy. A great opportunity to do that. And we're going to hear about another opportunity uh, tomorrow. Marmara celebrating 200 years, if you can believe it. 200 years. Tammy May from the town of Marmara will join us with all those details tomorrow. We'll have our Dad Joke of the Week with Galaxy of Games, part of Mark and Charity Mornings. Jimmy Hollywood will have the latest rumors and whispers from Hollywood and so much more. Do join us for Mark and Charity Mornings tomorrow and the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast wherever you find your favorite podcast.